Hello everyone and welcome back to this nanophotonics and plasmonics course. We're going to start now diving into applications of plasmonic nanostructures uh, and this uh, chapter we uh, focus on the particular case of optical nanoantennas. Uh, so be before we dive into plasmonic nanoantennas it's important to, to define what an antenna is, what a nanoantenna is uh, and what are the key properties of those, uh, those antennas. So uh, first of all, an optical antenna uh, would be basically just a nanostructure that would be able to enhance light matter interaction on a very local scale. Uh, so it really can be seen just as a, as a device uh, which has been designed to really efficiently convert uh, free space optical radiations uh, that are propagating uh, into localized uh, electromagnetic energy. So the, the degree of localization and the magnitude of this uh, transduced energy uh, would be just a good indicator of how good the, the antenna is. Although there are many uh, of the properties uh, of these nano antennas that are very similar to their counterpart um, for radio wave and microwave applications, uh, there are also very, uh, very significant differences that are just due to the fact that we are dealing with nanoscale objects and the fact that uh, the underlying mechanism of these nano antennas are basically the local surface plasma resonances. So uh, we're gonna just uh, focus on those nano antennas uh, that will be able to enhance basically three major types of photophysical effects. Uh, the first one is just light emission, uh, which is basically uh, just the combination of electrons and holes uh, that will be uh, resulting in the emission of photons. So this light emission process uh, can really uh, benefit, uh, can, be, uh, can benefit from the, the, the presence of a nano antenna. Uh, the photophysical effect, which is basically the complementary, would be the photo detection, where uh, you have a photon that gives rise to uh, to uh, an electron and, uh, and a hole, and this is basically the underlying physical uh, phenomenon which is responsible for uh, the realization of uh, photovoltaic cells. Uh, so you can really use nano antennas to uh, to basically enhance uh, or uh, improve the absorption of light uh, into a given system to generate more current. Um, and the final one is just uh, optical spectroscopy. Uh, so fluorescence is one that we're going to be discussing later in this, uh, in this chapter. Um, and also, for instance, uh, surface Raman spectroscopy, we're going to be discussing in chapter 11 and many other types of spectroscopic uh, processes. Uh, that can really benefit from the presence of nano antenna for either the, the capture of light or the, uh, the emission of light. Uh, so basically here is just a photon in, photon out process. Uh, and it's of course mediated by the, the creation of, uh, of uh, polarization currents in the, in the material uh, that we basically at some point recombine to, for, the, for the emission process. So we're gonna be discussing uh, some spectroscopy uh, in, in this chapter as well as in chapter 11. It's important to also introduce the, the concept of antenna and to discuss what an antenna is and how it actually works. Uh, I don't know if uh, many of you know how an antenna works, uh, but it's in fact very, fairly simple. So if you have uh, two lines of uh, conductors that are parallel, uh, each of them sustain uh, a current that flows in a different direction. So it's very straightforward to see that the net uh, current on this uh, system is actually zero. So but because there's no uh, net current, there's no radiation being emitted. Now, if you have uh, those two lines that are being extended uh, in opposite directions, uh, if you have the same current flowing in the same, uh, in the same uh, lines of conductors, you see that now because of these extensions, you're gonna have uh, a net current that will and that will uh, be sustained by the, the extension of this nano antenna. Uh, so because you have uh, this current that will be flowing now, uh, you're going to be able to actually create charges on both ends of the antenna because uh, you have a, you have a current, so you have automatically charges that are being formed on either ends. Because you have those charges that are being formed, uh, now you can actually be able to uh, to generate electromagnetic fields. And this is basically the, 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 the radiation that now is being emitted uh, as a result of this uh, simple extension. So you're looking at the dipole antenna uh, with this configuration. 
So this is uh, the antenna in uh, emission in emission mode. If you have the antenna in the receiving mode, it's basically just uh, the same process, but just reversed. So now basically you are just sending electromagnetic field on this antenna uh, because you have uh, those electromagnetic field. Uh, you can actually uh, separate charges. So you're gonna polarize this antenna with positive and negative charges because now the, the antenna is polarized. You, you basically create a current that will flow through the the, the lines of, uh, of conductor. So uh, this is the dynamic view of this, of this process. Uh, so you have this dipole antenna with the extensions, you have this current uh, with the black arrows that is basically flowing back and forth uh, uh, in phase with the, the electric field, uh, which is oscillating uh, from the, the free propagating radiation. And you see that you, you form those positive and negative charges on both ends that will result in this electrostatic uh, potential, uh, which is oscillating in time. So just looking at this uh, diagram, you should realize that this is uh, fairly similar to what uh, we've seen already for localized surface plasma resonances, and we're gonna come back uh, to that in a, in, a, in a minute. The electromagnetic field, uh, which is being uh, emitted by this antenna can be really calculated easily uh, from the, the current density and the charge density of this, uh, this antenna. Uh, you basically just solve Elmos's equations uh, and you can calculate the, uh, the potentials, both the scalar potential and the vector potential using the green tensor formalism, using those, uh, those point sources, so the, the current density and the, the charge density. So I encourage you to, to go back to the previous chapters, revisit this uh, green tensor formalism uh, and then it's straightforward once you have the potentials to, to calculate the electric and the magnetic fields that are being radiated uh, by the antenna. So what are the, the key properties uh, of this, uh, this antenna? So this is something general uh, that can be extended to any type of antenna. Uh, so there are five key properties that we're gonna be uh, highlighting here. So the efficiency is the, the first one, uh, which basically gonna give you how much uh, power is being radiated uh, as compared to uh, how much power is actually being dissipated by the antenna. So if you have an antenna which is being uh, dissipating some energy, it's going to be either radiatively via free space radiations or basically it's going to be uh, dissipated into non-radiative uh, channels like heat, uh, for instance. So this is the power which is lost by antenna, which is not usable. Uh, for an antenna purpose. So of course the whole board game of an antenna is to minimize this uh, uh, power being lost through heat dissipations, for instance, and maximize the amount of power being radiated. Um, radiation pattern uh, is also a very important uh, property of, nano of antennas in general. Uh, it's described by this, uh, this function P. Uh, it's basically just uh, the the, the, the angular distribution of radiative power. Uh, so if you integrate this over the entire space, then you basically should recover the total power being dissipated by radiation. So that's gonna give you some, some idea about where the power is actually being emitted uh, respect to, uh, to the transmitter. Something similar, uh, directivity, uh, which is directly uh, connected to this radiation pattern. Uh, it's going to basically also allow you to define the ability of an antenna to really focus light uh, and into a given direction. The last two uh, properties I want to highlight uh, are aperture, uh, which is just the ability for the antenna uh, to, to capture light. Uh, and that's basically going to be uh, given by the optical cross section uh, of a nano antenna and more specifically about uh, from the uh, absorption cross-section if you want to capture light. So uh, this is just uh, uh, something which is going to be a huge uh, a huge deal for plasmonic nano antennas as we've seen that plasmonic nano structures uh, have very significant uh, absorption cross-sections that are much much larger than their physical cross-sections. And finally the, the last one uh, is basically just the, the gain. Uh, so the gain is measured of course in, in decibel uh, and can be defined uh, by either the, the total uh, dissipated power and uh, radiation pattern or by the, the efficiency of the antenna and its directivity. So it's 
uh, an overall measure of the performance of, of the antenna, both in direction and in the amount of uh, radiation which is being emitted. So um, for regular antennas, I mean, you should know that we have uh, a lot of different type of antennas. Uh, they come in different sizes and different shapes. Uh, this is just a, a few examples that we already can find from parabolic antennas, uh, satellite dishes to uh, really just uh, roads or uh, rakes. They come in different sizes and shapes, and this is because uh, they are designed to operate at first different frequency ranges, and they are meant for different applications. So the, 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 the properties that we just discussed uh, are basically different uh, in terms of aperture, in terms of directivity, in terms of uh, efficiency. Uh, and this is because of different applications. So something similar uh, going to be actually defined for uh, plasmonic nano antennas. Why are uh, local surface plasmons actually good uh, for nano antennas? Why plasmonic nanostructures are good at nano antennas? So first, uh, we can look at uh, as receivers. Uh, well, if you're looking at uh, a nano antenna, which is receiving a signal, uh, nanoparticles, uh, they are much smaller than the wavelength of light. Uh, so this means that they, they will be able to actually focus light, uh, meaning the electric field, down to the nanoscale. And we've seen that the, the major property of uh, plasma nanostructures structures is that they can really have very strongly localized electric field uh, around the, their vicinity. So they are good transducers because they're going to be able to, to localize very efficiently uh, free space radiations uh, to localize uh, electromagnetic energy. Um, also, they have very large optical cross-sections, as, as, as just mentioned, so they'll be able to really collect uh, free space uh, radiations very efficiently uh, from a much larger area uh, than their physical cross section. So they have a very large uh, aperture uh, in terms of uh, optical antenna property. Uh, now as a transmitter, but that's fairly similar. So that because they're much smaller than light, uh, they can really interact with much uh, smaller uh, objects like uh, quantum emitters, molecules uh, that will serve as uh, transmitters. Uh, so they can really transduce from very localized uh, energy into free space very efficiently because they are uh, much more than the wavelength of light. Um, and now in terms of optical cross-section, so the scattering cross-section, uh, which is also much larger than their physical cross-section, uh, will be basically uh, allowing you to, to really scatter light into free space very efficiently. So they are very good scatterers. They will be able to, 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 to transduce uh, local, electric, uh, local electromagnetic energy from uh, small emitters into free space very efficiently. Um, so in the end, if you look at those two, uh, those two systems, a nanoparticle and, uh, and, and a regular antenna, uh, you're looking at a very similar process. So you have electromagnetic fields that are really driving a separation of charge. Uh, and that's basically the, the underlying physical uh, concept that basically going to give rise to uh, this uh, efficient transduction uh, between localized electromagnetic fields into free space radiations and vice versa. Uh, the only difference here between this uh, dipole localized surface plasma resonance and this dipolar antenna is just the size, uh, the scale, and therefore the optical frequency at which uh, it's going to operate. 